Hi, I'm just putting together this video. It's a show and tell in a way. Uh, I bought some new paint markers, a whole box of 50 of them. And I thought it would be fun to do a bit of color swatching um, and chat a little bit about the pens. And at the end, I do a page in my sketchbook using these pens. Um, so yeah, I'm finding my way back to making more videos and please forgive the sound quality um, you'll see in an upcoming video I am going to have to learn how to use a new piece of equipment I bought some Rode wireless me um, speakers and I tried to set them all up this morning but they were showing a, a red light for the battery so then I get to figure out how do I charge them and everything and I just it all just got too much so I put them away. <laughs> Learning a new piece of tech is um, a big deal for me and I have to be in the really right space of mind to do it and I was really in a different frame of mind ready to just make some video. So I made a, um, a little a couple of videos this morning just sort of talking uh, from the heart really um, from where I'm at and so I might pop those in a different um, video and keep this one short so that it's not too much of a big difference of the energy and the vibe of what I'm talking about because um, this one is kind of light and just showing you um, a new product and and a page and then sometimes I really like to um, drop in and um, be present with what's happening in, in my life maybe in the world and both and connect with you out there who um, I've got a fair idea that many of my audience are artists as well and so being able to connect with you I understand what it's like um, been doing this for quite a while and so I love to you know be present to that be present to what is and um, if that reaches over and connects and is of support to you that's even better so thanks for visiting and I'll see you soon bye I'm noticing as I'm getting ready with these pens um, what I, I went to an exhibition yesterday and, and the artist was her work was Elizabeth Cummings and uh, she is quite famous in Australia but her work was quite new to me and I was so engaged um, when I was going through the exhibition and just wanted to stop and take in these paintings they were really big so um, I think that's why sometimes paintings like that can look so extraordinary in the books that people um, that are made of them because they're so the originals are so big when you shrink that down into a smaller you know into a page there's so much detail that comes down into a small area um, so what I noticed uh, that I really loved about her work was the looseness and you will have heard me talk about that from time to time that I, that's something I think I crave or I'm aiming for even though it isn't what comes naturally but it's something that I make it, it excites me when I saw her work I realized how much it makes me feel alive um, and free I just felt an extraordinary sense of freedom that that she was conveying and that I made up that she was having um, you know but I'm not inside her head so I wouldn't really know for sure but looking at it it just seems like she is so free 
and uh, almost intoxicatingly so, you know, from a from an observer um, like that. So as I'm spending quite a bit of time today, I'm getting these paint pens ready. And I kind of thought, I want to just paint. I just want to get, get at it. Um, but these pens actually need a minute or so each or more to bring the paint down through. So I'm taking the time now to bring all the paint through, really hoping that I will be able to look after them well. You know, I think I'll have to keep them out of the sun, make sure their lids are on properly. And I really hope that the paint will stay wet um, inside of these pens so that when I come to use them, they will work. So, um, and you know, some of my, my favorite, favorite YouTuber, Sandy Hester, she takes time and does quite a lot of this color swatching. It's never been something that has appealed to me as something to do. It feels like such a waste of time. And I'm really um, noticing how much time this is taking. Like it's taking up lots of my day. But I want the freedom to be able to grab a pen and just use it. Um, and so kind of like the only way for me to create that opportunity, unless I was just going to use two or three like a limited palette, which is also probably a good idea. Um, but the only way for me to be able to just grab a pen and use it is if I let them all come with their ink come through. So like spend this time bringing their ink through. So that's what I've decided. It seems like a reasonable use of time today because, um, you know, I've just been so discombobulated quite a bit um, in the last while. So um, this is giving me an opportunity of a new medium that I've not used very much before. I've just used a few different Posca markers, but really stick, stuck mostly with black and white. I haven't really used them sort of as paint on a page that I've been seeing. And so one of the things I love that people use in their work to give a freedom of mark is the, like the Sennelier oil pastels and stuff like that. But what I'm very unexcited about those things is the fact when you're using acrylic, those, um, those pastels are made from oil so you can't you have to seal them somehow like and so then they dry a lot differently you know they don't dry they sit on top of your acrylic painting and then you can't do acrylic over the top stuff like that there's all these rules of how they don't play well sometimes with each other and so that's what's appealing to me about giving these paint pens a try I've been noticing um, Sandy and other artists use um, a paint pen like in a background on a journal page and then go from there. Uh, I do notice that in this set there isn't a lot of really pale neutrals so um, I might have to still discover how to get myself some of those. Um, in this set I did actually receive in the bundle one empty one so um, I'm just gonna find out a bit more about what kind of fluid paint is best to be put in these because they do say they're refillable so um, that'll be interesting too the fact that they could be refillable I was thinking as I use up some of them and I find them getting low if I could top them up with a um, runny kind of a white then I would have um, maybe a whole bunch of pale colors which can be great you know for your light lights it's easy to come across a dark color using it as it is but having a much more pale version could be um, could be fun to bring in more lights into the painting having more um, contrast and differences in the shades
This is a page in my journal. I just did a quick sketch of something that I was thinking about making a painting of. And so I thought it'd be a really good idea to test out these paint pens. And um, I'm right-handed. And so I used my left hand for significant amounts of when I um, painted this in with the paint pens. So although I'm really interested in getting the hang of, you know, making shapes on the page first and then bringing in the design, which is one of my favorite ways to paint, this time I just went ahead and did a sketch and then brought in the paint pens, but with every intention of being as loose as I could. Um, the pens are quite lovely. They, they flowed beautifully. I didn't have to shake them or do anything since they're brand new. I guess I had just activated them that same day. Um, they're quite lovely. The chisel tip, you can use it on its side and get a nice wide smooth line, which you'll see I did for this kind of tablecloth later with the blue. And you can turn it on its other end and get these kind of finer lines like when I drew that green chair, quite fine lines, um, which, um, yeah, I wasn't quite, I wasn't sure what I was going to be able to do with these. Um, I just went ahead and ordered the whole thing, which was a little bit extravagant, but it was like my inner child was very excited about that. It was It was something I used to do as a child, was kind of almost nag my poor mum into buying me new art supplies quite often <clears throat> and it's quite amazing because there were two girls at school that I went to school with and they had the best sandwiches the best hair the best clothes um, the best everything and I guess I used to really observe them and one of them got these this new tin of pencils Karen Dash um, Prismalo pencils and they would have been really expensive at the time because they eat, they still are now, you know, the Karandash are um, a beautiful brand. And um, yeah, so back then, the, I'm talking about 40 years ago or a little bit, maybe even a couple more years than that. And my dear mum bought those pencils for me and I've still got them. And so now, having been inspired by watching um, a couple of Patreons and more often Sandy Hester on her YouTube, I've been noticing people using the colored pencils. And what I love about Sandy is she mixes everything. She uses the paint pens, watercolors, uh, acrylic paints, matte paints, gouache, and pencils. And she'll use all of that in one, um, one piece if she wants to. And so I have found um, a number of bunches of pencils in my house. My husband had a few. I had bought Derwent's some years ago, but I'd never really got into it. So there's kind of, most of them are quite long. They're not like all used up. And these Prismallows, um, I'll see if I can find and put, pop a picture in there of them. But it's sort of beautiful, I think, that I am using these pencils that my dear mum that bought for me and she's crossed over now and it was almost like when I looked online and got really excited when I saw these paint pens and then I saw that they were half price it was like um, you know you can imagine mum just going just get them get them you know she's um, I, I feel like that when people pass over, they're not constrained by the concerns that they were in this life. And so um, I see mum as quite um, uh, an encourager of mine now. And so, um, yeah, I think I'll just make it that these uh, this set of paint pens is very dear, sort of special to me. And they are my, one of my invitations to myself to play. So that's what I'm trying to do here in this page that I did use my right hand, but trying to hold it quite loosely and let everything be quite loose. And I think, you know, this was maybe the same afternoon or if not the next day after I came home from that exhibition that I showed you some images just before of, um, oh, what's her name? Elizabeth Cummings. 
and the looseness that she had that I had just fallen in love with. Um, and then it's inspired by a Matisse painting, this uh, one. And you know, it's not great lighting, it's just the afternoon sun coming in there. But I just thought I would record it for a bit of fun and try and get the hang of bringing you videos again. So I hope you enjoy it. Oh, okay, I'm doing a voiceover after and I didn't realize I still have more to go. Um, okay, so I'm using a fine black liner to do the uh, face. And so she's looking down, um, kind of like with her, her chin tucked in. Um, so I was just trying to get the hang of where would things be. I quite love, you know, the pen and ink type thing. So, you know, just the fine line pen in black and making loose outlining. I quite love it. I have a thing about outlines. Um, I really enjoy them very much. Use the background noises. There's a shaky curtain. There's plastic all over a house next door. They've just covered the bricks with render, um, and, and lots of it is wrapped in plastic. So you might hear noises in the background. Sometimes it's nice to have a bit of a um, horizon line, brings it into being a bit of a room. Um, I wanted the idea that there was paintings on the wall. So that is sort of like the floor line and I didn't want it to be too heavy so I thought I would just add water while that paint pen was still wet. And that seemed to work a little bit sort of watercolory effect which you know it's all just experimenting really. The pens dry quite quickly on the page, actually, I noticed. Which is probably good because then you can do things over the top of them if you want to. I liked that colour, it was called Kappa. <laughs> A milky Kappa, I suppose. I was just trying out different ideas for painting that wall. I decided since I had those sort of four paintings with paler background, um, it would be good to paint the wall a particular colour so that those paintings could then stand out a bit more. When you do that, you just sort of feel what mood does it feel? And if it's the mood you're going for.
funny I chose to do those with my left hand. So they're, <laughs> they're supposed to be picture frames, which you would never see being so wonky, but there I was committed to um, doing anything I could to bring looseness into that painting. <laughs> This is a background paint from Matisse, so it's quite flat, which is great. You know, the uh, kind of is in keeping with the um, gouache type things, and um, I guess these pa the paint pens have a little bit of maybe a satin finish. Um, they're not matte, I don't think, and they're not high gloss. They're sort of maybe just a little bit of a satin finish, sort of. I'll be interested to see how I go about refilling these. They say they're refillable, so I'll be interested uh, to find out what to refill those with. bringing a bit of the pink down into the table so that it's not just the wall. Pink and green, some of my favorites. came back in and noticed um, on the face and hands they were quite dark and you couldn't see the hand and the hair so I just used this Posca pen to just go over a little bit on the hands and that face there and I'm just contemplating whether it needs a little mouth um, this is the one I was using to inspire this picture and you can see that it's sort of got as if the face is really tucked in, the chin tucked right into the neck um, and you can't make out the mouth very well. But that's, that's um, you know, that's just the uh, inspiration. So I think there's room for a tiny mouth here. And um, I just want to say that that was really fun drawing with these markers, really fun. <laughs> 